Apple recently announced three new iPhones and an updated Apple Watch. Here's what you need to know about the latest gadgets to come out of Cupertino. First, the Apple Watch Series 4. The wearable is bigger now. It comes in 40 and 44 millimeter sizes, and Apple rounded the screen's edges. Plus, the watch is thinner than the previous generation. The most pulse quickening feature has to do with your heart. The Series 4 will be able to take an electrocardiogram and detect atrial fibrillation, a type of abnormal heart rhythm. But that feature won't be available when the watch first ships. And we now get fall detection. The gyroscope and accelerometer in the Series 4 watch can detect if you hit the ground, ask if you're okay, and call for help if you need it. The timepieces also have new faces, one called infographic and other nature-themed ones, fire, water, and vapor. On the iPhone beat, Apple introduced a trio of new devices, the 10s and 10s Max, which are on sale this month, and the slightly cheaper 10R, which won't come out until October. All of them use Face ID, the company's biometric security system that debuted last year. The phones have a new processor, and the cameras have a bigger sensor, which improves the overall quality of your photos and lets you adjust the background blur in portrait mode, even after you've shot them, so you can impress your Instagram followers. The most noticeable feature is the huge OLED screen on the 10s Max. It's 6.5 inches on the diagonal, bigger than any other on an Apple phone. But a phone that big comes at a price. The 10s Max starts at $1,100 and could cost you up to a grand and a half. The era of screens that stretch our pockets and our budgets is here to stay. Hi guys, it's ASBYT and we've come to the end of the year and we have seen in this year some amazing smartphones. I've unboxed and reviewed loads of them, some good, some bad, some just a bit strange. But if you're looking to buy a smartphone right now and going into early 2019, I'm going to go through my top seven just in case you're looking to get your hands on a new device right now. So without further ado, let's look at what they are and why. So let's get straight to it. Now, because I have reviewed all of these in great detail, I'm not gonna be spending too long on each. I'm going to be trying to do this as quick as possible so that you guys can just get a rough overview. If you want more detail, the videos are on the channel already. Now, I will leave links to all of these products in the video description below. So if you are interested in going through and getting more information or indeed purchasing them after watching this video, you can go and do that. Firstly, because it is the holiday season, I am going to be giving away a Lenovo Z5 Pro smartphone. I will be running the giveaway over on my Instagram account, ASB underscore YT. All the information will be left over there. So good luck and happy holidays if you are celebrating. So starting with the first smartphone, we have here, in my opinion, the best sub $200 phone. And that is of course the Xiaomi Mi A2. Now the reason why I love this phone is because it's stock Android. It's part of the Android One program. It's got a pretty great camera again for the price. This variant's got four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, 5.99 inch full HD display, Snapdragon 660 SoC. So while it's not the 800 series, it certainly is still a very, very good mid-range piece of kit. This phone also has the most clicky buttons, in my opinion, on the market. The best buttons of 2018 on a smartphone goes to the Xiaomi Mi A2, period, hands down. And that's a fact. The two sort of main potential downsides for me personally are the 3010 mAh battery capacity and no headphone jack. But if those two things bother you, then possibly go for the Mi A2 Lite, which has a 4000 mAh battery capacity and a headphone jack. Pros and cons to both of them. I just wish Xiaomi had put both of them together. We can't have everything. And when you take all of that into account for 169 pounds currently, that'll vary, but currently, I think it's a great phone. Okay, number two. We've gone from one that possibly some of you haven't heard of. Now we've gone on to a real mainstream big hitter. We're of course talking about the Samsung Note 9. Now I've done a couple of videos on this before and my main overall impression of the Samsung Note 9 is it is currently probably barring one thing which we'll get to the best android phone on the market for all features if you want to take everything into account and you want to jam pack a phone with features the samsung note 9 
is the one. In my opinion, best display on the market, great battery, 4000 mAh, the S Pen, very premium, great build quality. You can also get a terabyte of storage with the Note 9, including that micro SD card slot. The two downsides, and one of them has been fixed, is the price. It was, in my opinion, too expensive when you could get similar, not quite as many features, but similar Android phones for quite a lot less money. But that's obviously changed over time. You can now get the Note 9 on some pretty decent deals and reduce price for buying outright as well. But the main problem for me with the Note 9, and the only reason why I can't really use the Note 9 as my daily driver currently is the camera. In my opinion, although the camera is good, it's not great. The front camera is pretty poor in my opinion compared to other flagships on the market. The rear camera takes some great shots, but if you're using the bokeh effect, depth effect, whatever you want to call it, or live focus, I think it's called on the Note 9, many different names across the phones. If you're using live focus on the Note 9, it's quite clunky. It takes quite a while to actually take that specific photo. And if things are moving, if you've got a moving target, then I've often found I've got blurred pictures. So a good camera, not a great camera, and therefore I can't use it as my daily driver. I will potentially look to port the Google camera onto here and then I may use it, but I often find those ported APKs of the Google camera app, they can be a little bit glitchy. If one works fluidly, then I'll try it. Now we're on to, in many people's opinions, the best all-round phone when you take into account money and you take into account features, and that's of course the OnePlus 6T. Now, this is the next iteration of the OnePlus 6. I could put the OnePlus 6 in here as well. They are very similar. You have the advantage of this, of the in-display fingerprint sensor if you want that, and the smaller notch, but you have the headphone jack on the OnePlus 6, so it depends on what's important to you. Very good Full HD Plus display, great build quality, very premium, great clicky buttons. Now, I've actually got the McLaren edition here. I was actually lucky enough to go down to the McLaren Technology Center to unbox this beautiful device. You can see that unboxing video again in the video description. Great day out. Great phone, 499, the original OnePlus 6 retails for, so it is slap bang in that sort of mid-range price bracket, but it has a Snapdragon 845. This one has 10 gigabytes of RAM, which is a bit overkill, but the other variants have six gigabytes and eight gigabytes. Storage options, 128 and 256 gigabytes, so plenty of storage on a smartphone. Yes, it doesn't have micro SD card expansion. OnePlus will tell you it's to kind of optimize the speed of the device because certain micro SD cards, especially if they are poor quality ones, can often have detrimental effects effects to the performance of a smartphone and that's why they tell you they don't do it whether you believe that or not is your decision. Again a pretty great camera but not the best camera. Like I said it, it's a halfway house between getting the most out of a smartphone and getting the best price and there's another one similar which we'll get to. Right so briefly with the OnePlus 6T we talked about good value for money. I can't really say that about our next phone. Now I have to include the iPhone XS Max here in this lineup simply because although I think it's overpriced, I've said that before, it's built very well. iOS, whether you like it or hate it, is a very fluid operating system. If you're in the Apple eco, if you're in that Apple, if you're in that Apple ecosystem, it's very difficult to get out of because all of your devices are synced up and it works very, very well. And that is often the main reason why people stick to iPhones because they're Mac users, because they, have a home pod because you know all of these things that keep them in that ecosystem and they're all good products on their own but when you put everything together it does make life easier not just side it's a great display made by samsung storage options it starts at 64 gigabytes and goes up to 512 there isn't a micro sd card slot though so again that might be a factor for you now the reason why i'm talking about the 10s max and not the 10s and not the 10r is because personally i'm a big phone kind of guy so i would prefer the max over the original. And yes, the 10R is probably better value for money. If you've got the money to spend big on a, a phone, I would personally go with the best. And currently the 10S is, although only minor, it is better than the 10R. Now the A12 chip inside the new iPhones, 10S, 10S Max and 10R is it's the fastest currently on the market. Obviously next year when we start seeing the Snapdragon 855 and also the Kira 980, which has dropped already this year, coming close, but I still think in terms of raw performance, it's probably the best. Also in terms of glitches and crashes and, and just working as a smartphone, I say this a lot, because the hardware and software is made by one company, it just gives Apple the edge in that department. It's got a great camera. Some people will say it's the best camera on the market. I don't quite agree with that, but I certainly think it's one of the top sort of three. My weight, my one, my Wayne, my Wayne problem, my one main problem is I think they've got the saturation completely wrong. It's far too warm. Every single time I'll take a shot of somebody's face or my face, 
face. The reds and the oranges just come out too much in my opinion. And the camera app, which is another problem. If you could edit the setup of the camera and bring those temperatures down, I would probably use this as a lot of my shots for social media. But currently in this state, I think there's better. Okay, so the fifth phone on this list is one that's gonna go to, in my opinion, the most beautiful, experimental, and just, a, uh, again, just a great phone. And this could have gone to a few different companies, the likes of Vivo with the Vivo Next, and of course the Oppo Find X, but I think they priced themselves on release far too high. And this is where I think the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 really works as a product. This phone currently comes in, again, like with the OnePlus 6T, at around the £500 mark, cheaper in certain regions as well. And I think that is a really, really good price for what this phone delivers. Not only do we have this beautiful ceramic back, one of, if not the fastest fingerprint sensor on the market, a great camera, again, not the best camera, and we have the fully bezel-less display due to the fact that we have, of course, the slider mechanism. So in there houses the front facing camera and all of the sensors, etc., which means that of course, we don't have to see them on the screen. There is no notch, there is no motorized part, which is another reason why outside of the price that the Oppo Find X, for example, doesn't make my list is because I honestly feel that the slider mechanism will probably be more durable than a motorized moving part. It's a lot more solid as well than the Oppo Find X, which has been known to bend break quite easily. Now the potential downside is battery, it's 3,200 mAh, which while I feel like I said in my review, it outperforms that tag due to its optimization. It's still not quite as good as the Samsung Note 9, the OnePlus 6T as an example. Another possible downside is it, it's quite a heavy phone due to that ceramic. So if you want a light phone, then don't get this. Possible beautify problems in terms of it smoothing out of the face, for example, on selfies. You can tone it down a bit, but it's still a bit present in the software. Not something that would stop me buying it, but just again, something to note. And all in all, again, another brilliant smartphone that's been made this year. So we have two left, actually eight, because there's a bonus one as well. Next up we have, in my opinion, and this will vary and DxO Mark won't tell you this, I still think currently what Google have done with the software makes this one of probably the top two smartphone cameras on the market. There's no surprise that a lot of people are downloading the Google camera app onto different smartphones in order to improve and enhance what their smartphone has. And while the rest of the features of the Google Pixel 3 and 3XL are a little bit disappointing, I, I, I wanted more from Google in terms of their smartphones this year and it just, it just didn't quite deliver. Deliver. If camera is paramount, if stock Android is paramount, then get the Google Pixel 3 or 3XL. If battery is important, don't get the Pixel 3XL. Design I'm split, to be honest, because the back I really like, the front, as you well know, and I've actually quite a nice wallpaper to hide it. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. There it is. I know it's been overplayed, but I, I honestly don't know what the design team were thinking on that front panel. The chin's not exactly small either, so I like the way it feels in the hand. It's nice and light. The back, like I said, looks great. The camera's great. The stock Android 9 is great, but there's a lot of other things that I would personally improve. But nevertheless, for those two main reasons that I've mentioned, it has to be on my top list because, again, in my opinion, I've probably said that about 16 times. In my opinion, it's one of the top two cameras. So our last smartphone is coming, followed by our honorable mention, and it is, of course, the Xiaomi Poco Phone F1, ladies and gentlemen. It had to be, didn't it? And the reason reason why the Pocophone F1 is on the list and is overall out of all of these, in my opinion, I've said it again, in my opinion, the, pa the Pocophone, <laughs> it's been a long video, the Pocophone F1 is, it has to be the breakthrough smartphone of the year, the best smartphone for the price because for currently £240 we have a Snapdragon 845, we have a 4000 mAh battery capacity, we have a good camera, pretty fast fingerprint sensor, six gigabytes of RAM, a headphone jack, not the best display, but a good display, and the skin that they've used is closer to stock Android than MIUI, which is often another turnoff for some people with Xiaomi products. Now there's confusion about who's made this phone. It does have Xiaomi as the parent company, but Pocophone are kind of the subsection and they are technically their own brand, similar to what we've seen with Huawei and Honor. And the Honor 10 almost made this list, but just not quite. And yes, a few people have said they've had screen bleeding issues, the speaker quality not being amazing, compatibility problems with Netflix. But if I look at this device, knowing what it's got for 240 pounds, could I really nitpick on it that much? I think 
think not. So the way I would describe the Poco Phone F1 this year, what OnePlus shot, what OnePlus sharted? What happened to you? Hey, Ruben, I'm in a situation here. We have to leave now. Well, no, can we stay a couple more minutes? But dude, no, this is serious. I just sharted. What well, OnePlus started with the flagship killer, great phone at a knockdown price. Poco Phone have managed to do that on heap. This year, they have changed the landscape of smartphones. If you can get a Snapdragon 845 SoC in a smartphone, regardless of anything else, and it's got other things, for £240, that's madness. Insane. Brilliant. Top phone. And finally, my honourable mention, my bonus smartphone, if you like, is the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Now, the reason why it's bonus is because I currently don't have it, but I have friends that have it, I have used it, and honestly, the phone is great. Yes, there's been issues potentially with glue gate, with, with green screen problems, and while that could be a bad problem if you have it, there's a lot of great things about that phone as well. It's got a beautiful design, the camera's amazing, the Kira 980 SoC is lightning quick, and it has been one of the most popular smartphones that has come out this year. As a result, it has to go on the list. So we have eight, we have my top eight right here. This is where I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section below which of these eight is your favorite, or is there one not on here that I missed of? Because I, to be fair, I could have put 15 on here, 20 on here, because there has been loads of amazing smartphones released this year. I had to condense it into one video, so unfortunately, these are the eight that I've chosen. All of these will be left in the video description below. So if you wanna go through, get more information, or indeed purchase any, you can do that. Yeah.